Hi, I'm Robert, and thank you for tuning in to my video series, uh, War Nikki's Encephalopathy 101. I'm going to try to quickly uh, give you a, a overview of what War Nikki's Encephalopathy means to me. Uh, I am not a doctor. I have not had any medical training. I have uh, no part of the medical profession. I am a uh, survivor of War Nikki's encephalopathy in the sense of uh, a person that kind of suffers uh, like someone from secondhand smoke. My wife was attacked by War Nikki's encephalopathy and I am her caregiver. She was attacked about a year ago so from my perspective we've lived this life for a year and I'm going to share with you my knowledge, my understanding about what this illness and sickness is. I'm going to ask you that if you're a patient of Warnicke's encephalopathy to, to stop, uh, not watch this video alone. There are some truths about the illness that are disturbing, uh, quite fearful, and I don't want you to experience these things alone. So only watch this video uh, with a loved one or someone that will help care for you if you're a patient. If you're not a patient, a caregiver, uh, feel free to watch it. But again, if you're a patient of War Nikki's and you found this video, please stop. Uh, don't listen, don't watch it or listen to it by yourself. Uh, I wouldn't want you to go through that uh, that, that trauma. Uh, War Nikki's encephalopathy is, from my understanding, a short-term illness. What I mean by short term is once it's on set, <clears throat> one or two things are going to happen. One, it's going to kill you and you're not going to know what's happened and no one around you is not going to know what's happened. It's probably not going to get diagnosed and that's going to be that. Number two, you're going to get sick enough that you're going to need medical attention. It's unlikely that you'll pull out of this. It's such a sneaky uh, illness. I look at it as a attack that's been set on someone's life, kind of a hit or an assassin assassination assignment. And once it hits you, uh, you're probably going to die. Very few people are diagnosed with Warnicke's encephalopathy. I would probably say 5% or less. From some research that I've uh, uncovered and read, uh, 1.75 to 2.4 percent of the population will be attacked by this illness. We have over 300 million people alive in the United States. That means over 240,000 people that are currently living between the ages of newborn to 80 years old uh, are going to be affected by this illness. Uh, my predictions from my research has indicated probably 37,000 people a year are affected or die from this illness. And uh, those are probably modest numbers. And it's so seldom diagnosed that very few of these people ever know what hit them before, they're, before they die. Um, it's a shame that we have an illness that nearly 37,000 people are affected with a year and nobody's heard of it. Uh, it's mostly, uh, most of the patients are alcoholics. Another, the second most cause of the illness is alcoholism, I'm sorry, is people that have had the gastric bypass surgery. So gastric bypass patients are number two. And, and anybody that's taking medication that could affect the normal functions of your liver can end up with this illness. Uh, the illness is basically a vitamin deficiency, vitamin B1, which is thiamine. Once your brain uh, fails to get this vitamin that's normally processed through the liver, uh, your brain starts to soften and melt away. This melting away action is what I believe is the Warnicke's encephalopathy effect that uh, is happening. And once that is stopped and the brain is firmed back up 
from the soft spots, you've totally been healed of Wernicke's. So from my perspective, uh, someone has this illness anywhere from 7 to 10 days to maybe as long as 2 weeks, uh, maybe 21 days. From uh, the experience that my wife had, the uh, illness sets on when your vitamin B1 level drops to a certain percentage or a certain reading. Uh, the doctors told me that a normal person will have a vitamin B1 blood count of around 156, somewhere in that 150 range. My wife had a vitamin B1 thiamine count of around 23 when they discovered she had Wernicke's encephalopathy. The first subtle clue that I had that this illness had been onset to my wife is one that I dismissed. I was at work on a Wednesday lunchtime. I received a call from my wife. She apologized for not going to church with me. I didn't know if she was talking about the previous Sunday or if she thought I was at church at the time. I just uh, assumed that she was uh, maybe intoxicated and I dismissed it. I didn't remember about that account of that uh, clue happening till I was reminded of, it, of my secretary a year later. When my wife made that call, made that statement, and I ended the phone call, I jokingly said something to my assistant that my wife apologized for not going to church with me. And that was that. The second clue I had was that evening at home, my wife talked very little. I fell asleep early because we were not talking. And I woke up in the middle of the night thinking, wow, we didn't talk that much. So the next day, I got home early and I would say monitored my wife a little bit, which uh, consisted of her not talking that much again. Uh, the following day, she didn't talk that much, and she asked me a question that I knew she had the answer to. At that point, it was Friday evening. I asked her to go to the emergency room. She refused, wouldn't let me take her to the emergency room. Uh, that was probably one of my last opportunities to get her to the hospital and her experience a full recovery. The brain deterioration continued. And from that point on, a rapid deterioration was happening. Saturday didn't seem like much. She was quiet, a little weak, uh, seemed like she had the flu maybe. People stay home with the flu all the time. I didn't think anything, didn't think much of it. Asked her to go to the doctor again. She refused. She was communicating clearly. I challenged what she was eating. She ate some things to satisfy me. So went Saturday. Sunday, she was a little feeble. I had to help her a little bit get dressed for church. We went to church. I tried to get her to go to the hospital immediately after church. She refused. She told me she had set a doctor's appointment. So she began to tell me what I wanted to hear to outwit me to not take her to the hospital. I fell for it. That night, she was a little more feeble. Sunday night, I barely slept. Early Monday morning, I took her to the doctor. The doctor urged me to rush her to the hospital. We got to the hospital, and one of the first things they did was, since that she was dehydrated, plugged her into an IV, and the damaging effects of war Nicky's was immediately stopped at that point, from all I understand. The IV is full of vitamin B1 thiamine. That began to firm up her, uh, stop the softening and deterioration of her brain. And from that point on, her brain began to firm back up because it was getting the vitamin. And the next few days in the hospital of her on the IV, I believe by the time they discharged us that Friday, we went in the hospital on Monday morning. By that Friday, we had a full uh, recovery from Warnickies. And from that point on, 
we had to deal with the damage that that illness had done. I'm going to stop here and do a part two, which will probably be able to wrap up my 2020 vision of Warnicky's. Uh, come right back and look at part two.